Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. I don't even care that the camera is in the frame right now. It's It's been a week. Oh, it's been such a long week. It was going fine. I was actually getting a lot of work done. And then Thursday, yesterday rolled around. Now just for context, today's the 8th and this happened on the 7th of December. I was all set down and I, I was so proud of myself because I've been like getting so ahead on work lately. Not, not so much getting ahead, but like I've been approaching the point that like I am on track to get ahead which is all that I wanted for myself this winter I really made a promise to myself to really try and be as productive as I possibly could this winter to hopefully get like a backlog of pieces that I can post and videos going up on my YouTube so that I didn't have to film in the summer because filming in the summer is brutal it's absolutely horrendous I've got I've got a massive air conditioner back there. For those of you that were with me in the summer, you understand, but for those of you who weren't, I have a massive air conditioner back there. It's being hidden by the white blanket right now. Um, and it's loud, it's very loud. And it's fine streaming because if someone can't hear me over the air conditioner, I can always like adjust my volumes or I can repeat what I've said, but that thing's no good during recording. The sound it makes is awful. Anyway, I was getting to a point that I really felt like within the next few days I would be able to start getting ahead of my work. And then yesterday I come in here bright and early. I sit down ready to get a lot of work done. I had videos planned to film. I had commissions that I needed to work on. I have some content that I need to get ready to post. And I go to take the first sip of my London Fog that I had made for myself that morning. I've been making them quite a lot recently. It's one of my favorite winter drinks and I picked up the cup and immediately dropped it all over my keyboard. This is my nice brand new, just bought it this past year, uh, rainbow LED keyboard and I took all the caps off and I gave it a really, really thorough cleaning and now I just need to let it sit and air out and hopefully fully dry for a few days. This is day two, I'm gonna try and leave it for at least three days and I'm just praying that it's not damaged. But that took up obviously my whole morning yesterday and I was not able to get any work done after that because I didn't have my keyboard. Uh, I do now have a cheap little replacement keyboard. I haven't hooked it up yet but at least that's going to get me through the next few days while I wait for this one to fully dry out. Uh, but in the meantime, it did actually force me to kind of clean up my workspace a little bit. I'm habitually a very messy person, unfortunately. I don't really see mess until it starts getting really, really bad. And then when it does get really, really bad, then I feel like too overwhelmed to do anything about it. But when a full mug of Earl Grey tea with steamed milk and vanilla extract spilled all over my desk, I it, it, it kind of forced me to reevaluate the whole setup because it was such a mad scramble trying to get all the electronics unplugged and away from the spill, cleaning everything off before it got worse. Thankfully, my computer is like way over to the side. It was nowhere near the spill and the spill was mostly concentrated into my keyboard. So luckily nothing else got damaged and I'm really just sitting and hoping and praying that my keyboard is not damaged as well. I've done everything right so far. I gave it a nice thorough clean and I'm letting it sit and completely dry out. So we just need to be patient with it. But in the meantime, I kind of just want like a relaxing day. I want a really stress free day. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to pull out one of my sketchbooks. Uh, I have not used a sketchbook in quite a long time. I've done obviously a couple videos here where I have been doing traditional art. I did the whole Inktober series. And I also did a couple of the coloring book pages from Creative Kara's coloring book. Uh, but I just want to do my own thing today. I kind of, I've got my trusty pencil here. I've got an eraser. And I just kind of want to doodle and, and see what comes of it. This is, this is a bit of a stress relief day for me. Because <laughs> let me tell you, I was extremely stressed. As soon as that cup spilled over, it just ruined my entire week. But anyway, I've got my lovely little canvas here and I kind of just want to start doodling around on this. Now, I think every artist kind of has their go-to uh, specialty that they kind of lean on, especially for like warm-ups or kind of like inspiration gathering pieces. Um, I know a lot of artists that draw landscapes, animals, 
particular characters or fan art. I, I really just like enjoy, I just enjoy drawing people. Like no people in particular, not a specific character or anything. I just really enjoy coming up with faces and sort of designing the characters as I go. And sometimes these will result in kind of like new original characters of mine that I'll draw again and again from time to time. Uh, but most of the time I never draw these characters again. They're just kind of designs that I draw because I want to draw them and because I'm in the mood to kind of design a character and for no other reason. So I'm just starting out here with like a three quarter view of a face. I'm thinking of going for a pretty feminine face. There's definitely a stigma of a lot of artists and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because if you're the artist you can just kind of draw whatever you want. So like if all you want to draw is dogs you can just draw dogs. If all you want to draw is landscape you can just draw landscapes. And a lot of artists I've found uh, and I know it's kind of a meme tend to draw more feminine characters. I think personally I draw about 50 50. I, I like drawing feminine and masculine characters characters as well as sort of more androgynous characters. More than anything, especially when I'm doing these kind of just relaxing portrait pieces where I don't really have anything in mind and I'm just creating the character as I go. These ones, I don't really have a set idea for what I want the character to uh, look like, what their story is, masculine, feminine, androgynous, both, neither, what have you. It just kind of depends on what my hand decides to do. Like if I'm in the mood for drawing a really square jawline that day, I might make the character a little more masculine. Um, if I'm in the mood for drawing some like really thick, really luxurious eyelashes that might indicate a more feminine character. But I like drawing all sorts of gender expression in my art. I've noticed this weird thing I do with faces lately. And I don't know if this is something I've always done and I'm just now noticing, or if it is a new thing. I always start with the eyes. That's, that's always been the case, but I've noticed that I tend to draw the rest of the face first and then I go back and draw in the eyebrows. Sometimes I won't even draw the eyebrows until like the entire head is complete, the ears, the hair, everything. It's not because I don't like eyebrows. I actually really, really enjoy them. I, I generally keep my eyebrows pretty thick because I like the look of them. They've actually thinned out quite a bit over the years. I think I've just found that drawing them once the face is completed kind of gives me a better idea of where they're supposed to be on the face. Same with like the actual face shape here. If I draw the face shape first and then I draw the features in afterwards, um, they generally end up pretty squashed. So I like drawing the features first and then I'll form the face shape around the features. I want to make this one a little bit more squash towards the bottom. Kind of so that we have those really round youthful cheeks. I also realize I'm making this very, very small. Uh, you should see some of my other sketch pages. I have never been good at using the real estate that a page provides. I always start right in the middle and I make the tiniest portrait I possibly could. And it's so funny because I've always admired those artists that literally fill up an entire page. They do like different poses of the same character or they'll just do little like embellishments and details off to the side. I've always wanted to do that. But I feel like that requires a little bit of forethought into like the planning of your canvas. Like you need to decide ahead of time where your characters are gonna go. And then if you wanna do some like gesture studies, you can put those off to the side. If you wanna do like a little plant in the corner, you have to plan all that ahead of time. Or at least that's that's what I feel I need to do. I've decided to make this kind of like a elven fairy character, big surprise. But yeah, even though I really enjoy that art style of just like filling up the entire page and I really, really wish I could emulate that, this is just always how I've uh, enjoyed drawing, just like one, one little bit at a time. It's definitely better for composition to get kind of a whole outline done first. So instead of focusing on the details of the face here, I would like actually do a full armature of how I want the character to look. I don't like this mouth actually. I want something a little smaller. Uh, and then once you kind of have like the pose and the composition complete, then you should be going in and doing little details like this. But when I just want to relax, when I just want to draw something for fun, this is how I do it because this is how, this is how I enjoy art. I think it's really fun to kind of see a character sort of spring fully formed from the page. I'm not even entirely sure how big I want this piece to be right now. I'm definitely 
definitely thinking of adding hopefully a full body if I can fit it in here. But I'm not even entirely sure kind of how I want this character to be positioned yet. In fact, let's start to map that out now. Okay, I've got kind of like a rib cage shape here for her. Kind of want this to look like a posed portrait. Like she knows the camera's there and she's posing for it. I think hands are always tricky in these types of pieces because I'm not entirely sure where I want to pose them. I'm thinking something in the like demure, just sort of off to the side and very delicate looking. I think I'll just kind of feel it out with the structure of the fingers here. I still hate the mouth. I'm gonna erase it and come back to it later. I just don't think I just don't think it fits the rest of the character so far. I think there's always a little bit of a learning curve whenever you switch mediums. And I don't mean like if you're a digital artist and you're trying out traditional art for the first time or vice versa. I mean like I've been doing traditional art all my life, specifically graphite sketches like this. But because I'm currently primarily a digital artist, when I do switch back to a traditional art, there is like a little bit of a learning curve that I have to get past before I kind of remember how to do traditional art again. I think a part of what's bothering me about the face is the jawline might be a little too big. Like it's making her whole head look a little, a little too large. I also think I might have done this in a way that's kind of begging for like a, a waist up piece. I haven't really left a lot of room for the legs, not just on the paper, but like in the composition itself. So I think that's what this is gonna end up being is just a waist up piece. I wanted to be holding something here, but I'm not sure what yet. Yeah, traditional art is just so messy too. That's one of the main reasons why I've specialized in digital is as I explained earlier in this video, I am a habitually very messy person. So if you give me a hobby that requires like an excess of supplies, such as traditional art, graphite is not that bad because the sketching obviously is kind of contained to the paper. But I also like, I would love to work with paints, but oh my God, the mess would be unimaginable. I kind of want to give her a little bit of like a wasp waist, like the corseted kind of Victorian figure. Cause I want her to look sort of like an insect. I'm going for as like fairy folklore as, as possible. So I'm gonna snatch the waist in and then flare out the hips a little bit. And I think I, if I give her kind of like a corset with a little bit of structure on the bottom, that'll look really good. Something with maybe some like leaf decals on it. I feel like I'm going for very mid 2000s kind of, well, who's that artist? I've mentioned them before that did the like really dreamy uh, like fairies looking over a waterfall with a rainbow unicorn drinking from it kind of thing. That's kind of the style that I'm going for, that very little girl magical kind of look. Coming back to the mouth here, hopefully one last time. Part of my issue with the mouth is that I can't use the lasso tool with traditional art. That's really my favorite tool when I'm sketching so that I can really get the composition of a piece right. It makes it so convenient to just kind of put down what you want the shape of something to be and then move it around to a place that looks good. You know what? I think her eyebrows might be throwing it off as well. Cause I think when I drew those, I was thinking of more of like a elven creature. And now that I've gone more fairy, I think they need to be a little bit higher and a little bit more delicate. Right, I'll kind of define those later. Oh, I gotta say, I'm not loving this so far. You know what? Doing something drastic. I'm getting rid of the eyes entirely because I do not like the expression that it was giving me. And I wanna do something with her eyes kind of closed. Like she's looking more down at whatever's in her hand, which I want, I want her to be holding like a bouquet of flowers, but I don't wanna draw a bouquet of flowers. I'm really trying very hard not to dig too deep with my pencil. Cause that's something I always used to do as a kid whenever I wanted to, like I had too many sketch lines going on and I wanted to be able to see something really clearly as I would just dig in really deep with my pencil so that I could see what I'm doing a little better. But I always want to try and leave room for uh, being able to fix mistakes later. So digging in my pencil too hard would definitely be really difficult to correct. You know what? I think I like that a lot better. I like just that change to her expression has really made this piece a lot more appealing to me. I didn't really like her looking directly at the viewer. I need to figure out what her hair is doing. I'm kind of thinking just some cute space buns, make them really big. What if I actually made them really fluffy and gave her like some 4C? I think that would look really cute actually. I don't really know if I want to give her edges or the other option would be to like draw some of the baby hairs in so that we get these little squiggly bits. 
I think those are cute. But the edges to me seem a lot more ethereal. What if we did some kind of like decorative? Something like this almost. Is that too much? Oops, that one went a little wonky. I can't tell if that's cute or not. Hmm. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. She looks really cute now. I think that change in facial expression really helped. It's just so messy. Every time my hand drags over it, it kind of smears the graphite a little, which I hate. I know I should be using like a, a piece of paper or something so that my hand doesn't drag over it as often as it does. I thought the glove would suffice, but I guess not. You know what? Instead of a bouquet of flowers, I'm kind of thinking to go with the insect theme what if we gave her like a butterfly or a flat firefly or something just kind of kind of just fluttering here something like that so it's not like she's holding it or trying to catch it but she is just sort of playing with it i like that I think that's cute. I'm debating whether or not I want to give her a top. I kind of feel if she's wearing the corset, she kind of needs a top, but maybe just something like really, really flowy and loose, like barely even there kind of thing. This is kind of fun. I can kind of drape it around the back here. I like that. Yeah, that's cute. It'll, it'll be kind of like a chiffon material. Is that what I'm thinking of? I don't think that's exactly what I'm thinking of, but something, something like a, a sheer material. And then I do want to give her little fairy wings here as well. I'm thinking kind of small. I don't want them to be too big. I can draw wings pretty well, I think. Like bat wings, uh, feathered wings, kind of like mythological wings. The one type of wing that I feel like I kind of have trouble with is fairy wings. And I couldn't tell you why, but I just, I just think they don't look that good when I draw them. I'm gonna draw the other pair way over here so I don't really have to detail them out. That's cute though. All right, I like this way more than I did when I was halfway done with it. I don't think I'm gonna be using microns on this. I think this is gonna be purely a uh, graphite piece because what I wanna do is I wanna kinda clean up the edges a little bit, but with graphite. So darken everything in, cause this is, this is pretty much the completed sketch. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually, let's see, I have a putty eraser. I wanna see if this works, right? So I'm gonna take my putty eraser Take this glove off while I need it. Get it all nice and soft. All right, I think that's as malleable as I'm gonna get it. And then what I wanna do is I wanna just kind of press down on the piece to kind of lift the graphite lines a little bit because I wanna still be able to see them, obviously. But I just wanna lighten everything up so that as I do start to define the lines, the sketchier lines underneath them are not going to be as visible and in the way. All right, I know that looks scary, but they are still very clear to me, so don't worry about it. Um, but what I am gonna do now, I'm just gonna take a piece of paper so that I don't continue to smudge the graphite like I was doing earlier. And I think I'm gonna speed through this because I don't need to be narrating this whole part, but I'm just gonna sort of define and render uh, everything that I did previously. we have her all finished. Side note, I forgot how much fun putty eraser is to play with. I prefer something a little stretchier. I really like slimes uh, in that sense. Or uh, like the Aaron's putty. I used to have some of those on my desk I really liked, but this is a good substitute. Anyway, yeah, that's the finished piece. I kind of want to scan this and see if I can like color it digitally because I don't really have any um I have colored pencils but I don't really feel like breaking those out right now and I also did kind of want it to remain a graphite piece I just really like working with graphite so I didn't really want to add colored pencils to this I'm trying to get the putty to fit back into the thing yeah thanks for just hanging out with me today and kind of vibing this really picked my spirits up I was really really happy with this piece um, kind of reminded me of the good old days where all I had was 
a sketch pad. Also, look at that page real estate. This is what I was talking about at the beginning is I just don't, I can't accurately fill up a page. It's just not possible. Well, I'll just set that aside. I'll probably scan it if for no other reason than to just like have a digital copy of it because graphite tends to get smudged in sketchbooks. Um, but yeah, once again, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, if you wanna see more of my art, I do have an Instagram where I post everything. I try to post there at least three times a week. I apologize about these past few weeks because I know this is going up because I know this is going up two Tuesdays from now, which means this past week I didn't have a good art week because I was trying to catch up on stuff. And then this next week, I'm not going to have a great art week because of my keyboard situation. Hopefully the following week, I'll be a little more caught up and then you will see this video. <laughs> so uh, I apologize about those first two weeks there, but I do try to post there at least three times a week if you want to check out some more of my art. If you want to catch me live, I do have a Twitch. Uh, we do art and games over there. I'm usually live every Tuesday and Friday. And then I'm actually going to try and post a speed draw of this to my TikTok if you want to check that out. I'm trying to post a lot more often on TikTok. I I basically just got like a lot of speed draws and kind of process videos on there but we have a fun time and sometimes I go live on there too like for the rendering process of this piece I just hopped onto TikTok live and chatted with a few people uh, and then lastly if you want to support me and my content in the absolute best way possible I do have a patreon that you can visit you can support me there for as little as a dollar a month and get exclusive content for as little as three dollars a month and last but not least make sure you subscribe to this channel to find your way back here for next week's video I'm really really hoping I will have a digital speed draw ready for you guys next week I've been kind of working on it on and off for the past few weeks and it's kind of getting to the point where I hate it but I know it's only because I've been working on it for so long and I just want it to be done by now so hopefully I will have that for you guys next week. If not, stay tuned. I promise I will have something. Yeah, again, sorry for the kind of low energy video. It's been a rough week. But thank you guys for being here and hanging out with me. I love you all so much. Bye.